place is locked. I don't think that's going to stop me. Medical always makes this look so bloody easy. It's a learned skill, like a magician's trick. It just takes practice and more practice. I don't have the patience for that. Oh, got it. Oh, oh. give me the gun. Yeah, yes. Oh, properly. When he ditched the wagon, he was headed somewhere. This is the only building in the area. Come on, this way. Who robs a bank on a night like this? Must be crackers. Oh, very smart. Oh. Oh. Listen. Claire de Lune. Moonlight. Odd. It's coming from in here. Put your hands where I can see them. Step away from the table and turn around. Who are you? My name's Hudson. You don't know me, but I do need to speak with you urgently. I, I know it's late, and I am so sorry, but I finally found you, and I didn't want to wait any longer to talk. I'm Paul Lendell. Well, what couldn't wait until morning? Oh, it's about your father. What about my father? I, does the name Hudson ring a bell? Have a seat. My father's name was Ned Drake. Yes, well, uh, 16 years ago, I was manager at the Dominion Bank. I oversaw the development of the most innovative vault at the time, solid steel construction. What does this have to do with my father? I mean, he wouldn't darken the door of a bank. In his words, banks dupe gullible people out of their hard-earned cash. Institutional robbery, he called it. Well, the robbery I'm talking about was not institutional. On April 26, 1905, my vault held a shipment of unmarked bills destined for Montreal. It was stolen, and not a soul knew the money was there, except for the engineer who inspected the vault, pronouncing it structurally sound. I believe that man was your father. My father was never an engineer. Well, he certainly fooled me. Are you actually a detective, Miss Drake? This Hudson, why do you think he's my father? I'd been searching for him for years. By fluke, I came across a picture of a man named Ned Drake. I recognized immediately that it was Hudson. Where is he now? He's not here. My father died years ago. I see. Hudson once told me that everything he did was for his girl. At the time, I figured he was talking about his wife. But then it dawned on me that he was talking about his daughter. Why are you here? The night the money vanished, Toronto streets were deserted. Weather was foul, the wind took out the power east of Bay Street. The thieves got away in a wagon, but the police were right on their heels. Who are you? My name's Hudson. Did you know there was a bank robbery tonight? Nobody else seems to be out on a night like this. You think I robbed a bank? The wagon was abandoned nearby and the driver fled on foot. There's a mathematical probability that you are that driver. What are you doing here? I'm a foreman, working on Convocation Hall. I need a place to, to store tools, lay out plans. Every man should have a place to call his own. <laughs> With a bottle of good scotch and a copy of the Sporting Life. Cave for the modern caveman. Exactly. What's this? Miniature music box. Extraordinary workmanship. It's for my daughter. 
She's about to turn 15. Once a very generous gift. Get your coat and we'll take a walk down to the station. If what you say is true, you'll be back before you know it. I don't want the place to burn to the ground while I prove myself to the Toronto Constabulary. <laughs> I didn't rob the Dominion Bank. I've been here all night. I never mentioned the name of the bank. Woody Allen. Classic misdirect. You lulled us into a false sense of security and then vanished. If we don't find the money, I hope he's got a bottle stashed. I could use a stiff drink on a night like this. A secret door. So that's how he escaped. Now, where's the loot? That set of drawers looks promising. But I bet it's locked. Well, like I said, practice and more practice. Like I said. Practice takes patience, and tonight, we've got that in short supply. Margaret will be chuffed if I come home with a bag full of money that's unmarked. Money is only what she thinks she wants. Don't presume to tell me what my wife wants was. Guess there'll be no finger marks in the vault. If I were $100,000 in small bills, where would I be? He could have stashed it anywhere en route before coming back here. The daughter, I assume. At least he's telling the truth about something. She looks like she's read it. Interesting. It's hard to actually tell the color of the hair from the photograph. Because it truly does take one to know one. You got that right, the old mucker. Better red than dead. Thanks for coming, Mary. There's almost no one left at the station. Fortunately for you, morality officers work into the wee hours of the morning. Supposed to be at the King Edward Hotel over an hour ago for an all-night stakeout with Trudy. Cheating husband? Not this time. Oh, I see. Something more nefarious. You know, walking into a hotel with almost no luggage, a hotel security, they'll make note of that. I've always traveled late. My father changed jobs all the time, so we were always on the move. His credo was, douse the lights, grab what you need, and hit the road. <laughs> My father's credo, never believe anything that you hear, only half of what you see, and don't trust anyone. <laughs> Did you get that file? So why do you want to know about this robbery? The case goes back to 1905. A man showed up tonight saying that my father was somehow involved. His name was Landell. Apparently he was the bank manager at the time. You don't believe him? There was something about him. Well, your father's name isn't anywhere on this file. The police believe a man named Hudson had something to do with it. The name doesn't ring a bell. Mm -hmm. Night of the robbery, the police found Hudson at a warehouse at 732 Front Street. But he tricked them and vanished. The money was never recovered. And this Hudson remained their prime suspect. But my question is, if Landau wanted to find this Hudson, why would he come to you instead of the police? I've got to run. Lock up, would you? I'll slip the key under the door when I leave. And stay away from that bank guy. I think he's dangerous. I'm dangerous too. Hello? Hello? Inspector Llewellyn Watts, we're looking for Frankie Drake. She just left minutes ago. She's on a case. I'm Officer Mary Shaw. I'm on duty. I was just liaising with Miss Drake on a personal matter. I see. This is former Chief Constable Thomas Brackenreed. John. I'm sure. Chief Constable, I, I do know you by reputation. And Inspector, your impossible to achieve solve rate is bandied about the office as something to aspire to. You're almost as legendary as Detective William Murdoch. You're in the morality division. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Women in uniform at our station. Sometimes progress moves in the right direction. We need to speak to Miss Drake about her father. Seems like everybody does. You know he's been dead for years. This is in connection with the cold case. We believe her father used an alias. He went by the name Hudson. He was implicated in the robbery of the Dominion Bank back in 1905, but he escaped our custody. At the time of the heist, the bank manager was a man named Paul Landell. We're trying to locate him. Landell? That was the man who was just here. Frankie had doubts about his story, and... 
Here, hold these, please. She wanted to see the old case files, and since I have access to authorised police files... The bank believed that Landell was connected to a botched robbery just last week. A bank teller was killed. This is a murder investigation now. He's a very dangerous man. We need to keep these. The police make copious notes. Just once, they might come in handy. Good night, Miss Shaw. Oh, um, but the, the keys. It was fortuitous to run into you. Good evening. me to the King Edward Hotel, please? Yes, I need to leave an urgent message for Miss Frankie Drake. She'll be arriving shortly. Please tell her that she needs to meet Mary Shaw at 732 Front Street. And tell her to hurry. Inspector Watt, Chief Constable, I don't, for, former Chief Constable. I'm Officer Mary Shaw. I'm in the middle of a case. Who are you? I'm Paul Landell, former manager of Dominion Bank. I'm here to reclaim stolen property. This is material evidence in a police investigation. You don't want to get in the middle of this. up to his old tricks. It was very nice to meet you, Mr. Landell. I must be back to the station. You think I'm letting you walk out of here? You're not going anywhere. You leave me no choice but to arrest you for obstructing justice and... Bank guy. I think he's dangerous. Oh, Frankie. You had him pegged. If you untie me now, you have my word as an officer of the law that you will be treated fairly. You think you've got bargaining power? Are you nuts? Well, the police will be here momentarily. Really? And who knows where you are? In my experience, most cops are so clueless they won't even know you're gone. Mr. Landell, we aren't quite as clueless as you think. We've been looking for you. There's a bank teller lying on a slab in Markham with a bullet in his chest. Well, that's got nothing to do with me. We suspect that we'll find your finger marks all over the murder weapon. We know that you were the inside man back in 05. I had nothing to do with that robbery. That crook Hutchin walked away with it all. Let's agree to disagree. Now, why don't you let me... Shaw. Shaw, go. As bargaining chips, women pull at the heartstrings, don't they? Oh, and she's all dressed up in a police uniform. 
This uniform will see you hang for murder, Mr. Lando. Nobody move or the uniform gets it! After you left, I went through my father's things. I thought you might be interested in this. What is it? It's just one piece of the puzzle. What are you talking about? I knew my father better than anyone else. You're free to have this, but without me, you'll never find the money. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> Women do pull at the heartstrings, don't they? Just like your old man. You tried to out-con a con. You met your match back then. And it's happened again. Frankie Drake, I presume? Your timing's impeccable, Miss Drake. Especially that right hook. Well, I'll accompany you back to the station, Miss Shaw. Have you taken finger marks before? Uh, yes, yes, several times. Although, they were my own. Well, I've always been a firm believer in practice. <laughs> What's in there? Well, I was supposed to be on a stakeout. I was going to get caught up on some paperwork. Luckily, I got Mary's message. Good on you. Do you recognize her? Where did you get this? It was in the desk drawer the night we met your father. Inspector Watson and I were on the case back then. I'm ashamed to say he outwitted us. <laughs> I remember this bike. Do you know anything about the money? We never really had any. My father did go by the name Hudson, though. Those were some of the happiest times I can remember of him. We stayed put for over a year, but he always swore he would never go near a bank. And you believed him? I was a kid. And now? Perhaps my father was more complicated than I realized. He was working on this the night we met him. I love this song. What the hell? Way more complicated than I thought. That was my dad. Do you want to go for a drink? <laughs> my kind of girl.